Hello and welcome back to Flora and the Novice Explorers. As you may know, we have been living in Flora for nine months now. Yeah, our journey started actually a few years ago after we got swept up in the perpetual beauty and apparent ease of living the hashtag van life. But as we all know, we have to take what we see on social media with a massive pinch of salt. To make our hashtag van life dream a reality, we moved from a large one bedroom flat into a static caravan and then into Flora. The process took around three years. But you may be thinking, what has gone wrong with your life? But it was a conscious decision for us to do it. So our van isn't exactly ideal and it's not always comfortable, but it is our home and we love it. Flora has transported us thousands of miles and taken us to some places that we will likely never forget. So how does living in a relatively small space work for us? Bear in mind we have to fit ourselves, our food, furniture, gas, water, all of our worldly possessions inside whilst also keeping the space comfortable and practical. So whilst doing all of that we also need to remember to give each other our own space, which most of the time is achievable. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. So our mornings start with a joint decision. We either both get out of bed, or nobody does. We do love our bed, it's pretty much the size of a standard double, and it's comfy as hell. The only problem is that there isn't much room to play around with when the bed is out, and we can't access many of the cupboards too, so we have to plan ahead. Fortunately, the bed only takes a few seconds to put back into position. I think we could give a Formula One team a good run for their money, Megan. I agree. Is it time to get up? Uh, I think so. <laughs> so once we've put the bed away, we've got a little bit more room to play with. Not a lot, but it's enough to get going and start our day. So at this point, we tend to go our separate ways. I'll retreat onto the swivel seat once we're parked up. This is pretty much spun around 99% of the time. Sometimes if we're in a really urban area, we don't do it. Um, so we look a bit more stealthy, but most of the time it's swiv swiveled around. This is my main seat because I'm the passenger most of the time and also it gives me a little bit more headroom when we're sleeping in the bed. So we definitely prefer sleeping with our heads up this end of the van, it's a lot more comfortable. However, there has been the odd occasion where we've had to spin around and have our heads at that end of the van and for me, that is a lot less comfortable. It's a bit more claustrophobic and the amount of times that I've hit my funny bone on the bedside table is no longer funny. So when he says go our separate ways, we are only literally a matter of a metre and a half apart. I can almost touch him. But anyway, this is my corner of the van. It's the kitchen end, of course. And from this position, I make all of our meals. First things first, it's time for morning coffee. Do excuse the mess. It is messy this morning, I do apologise, but more often than not, we leave the washing up from the night before until the morning after, because we use the leftover water from the morning coffee to do the washing up. There's no point in boiling extra water, just for washing up. Probably the most awkward part about making the coffee in the morning is reaching for the tap. It's the only part really that I have to actually stand up like and stoop almost, but everything else seems to be in arm's reach. So one thing that we have mentioned in a previous video is our lack of ventilation. It's all right when it's a lovely sunny day and you can have the doors open, but when it's wet and miserable or cold outside, you don't really want to be opening all the doors up. So one thing that we're going to do when we get back home is we're going to add some sort of ventilation above the cooking area. So while the coffee is on there doing its thing, let's talk tables. Long time viewers of the channel may remember that we made our own table which attaches to the runner here, which works pretty well, but it's not perfect. There are a few things that would uh, we would like to change, but we can't really being on the road. However, a few months ago, we got this table, this our picnic table, out of the roof box. And since then, it's kind of just stayed in the van and has become one of those items that just floats about. What's handy is that it's a sort of a better size than I wouldn't want. It's a little bit more mobile and Versacell 2, which is always handy, but it is quite awkward to put up. It pretty much fills all the space we have here, so I'm usually pinned in again. Um, so again, 
plan forward, think ahead, get things out of the cupboards if we need them. And to put the thing up does take a little bit of a expertly executed choreography. It takes a few practices here and then. If you make a wrong move, you've got to start again because it's a little bit tricky. Now we're about ready to start our day. Usually I'll jump on the computer and check a few bits, get on the internet, do emails and stuff like that. Unfortunately, this table provides a lot more real estate than our wooden one does. And also I find this table a lot more comfortable. For some reason, the wooden one, we didn't quite get the right height and it was putting a lot of like weird pressure on my shoulder, especially if I was on the mouse editing all day. But this table uh, makes it a lot easier. And we can slide it about a foot, foot and a bit either way. So if Meg needs to get out, we pull the table towards me. If I need to get out, I push it away and we can just about make it work. On the driver's seat is where all my stuff lives generally. We have a rucksack each, mine's full of camera gear, computer gear, cables, leads, all that sort of boring stuff. But this is the perfect space to get the laptop out. We also have all of our electrics, our switches, outlets, plugs, what have you. They're all located at this end of the bed, so it kind of works perfectly. Um, I've got plenty of space here. Get my mouse out, get the hard drives, headphones. It's a perfect little setup for me. Right, so I wanted to show you around the kitchen a little bit more and show you how we use the limited space. I think it's important to point out that we, I say we, I adapted pretty quickly to the lack of space and the setup. So let's talk about some pros and cons. Cons, I remove the cushions out of the way just so that they don't get splattered with oil because it's quite a short distance away. Another con is that we don't have a fridge. We have a cool box, which if we're honest, we very rarely plug in. So that dictates on what we buy when we do the food shop. We eat a lot less meat and dairy, but in a way it kind of makes us have a bit more of a healthy diet in regards to eating more veg. On to our next con, we don't have a sink. Instead, we have a washing up bowl that floats around the van. It works for us because I don't think we have enough worktop space to sink in a dedicated sink. Another con, kind of con, is that this hides it all away. But then if you pile a load of stuff on this, you can't access the main cooking area. But we designed it, it's our own bloody problem. Long term watchers will know that it is my biggest want to have an oven, but I think the gas consumption would go through the roof and we haven't got the right setup yet to be able to accommodate it. And now for the pros. It's a really simple setup, so it's easy to fix. If we stain something or break something or have a big spillage, it's pretty easy to clean up or fix or mend. Camp stove is pretty easy to clean as well. And all of the gas and water is down below, pretty easy to get to, and just a very simple setup, so it doesn't take a brain surgeon to work out what is wrong with it. It's good for us. From my cooking position, everything is in arm's reach. We've got the utensils and we've got a huge amount of storage underneath. I can reach the cool box and sometimes when the table is here, I've got even more workspace to play with. It works for me and I love it. So alfresco dining underneath our awning doesn't happen very often. We have only got it out around three times on our trip so far, but we're very glad that we have it for these opportunities. Although to be honest, at the moment, this has been more useful for the rain than it has been for the sun, but next week the sun is on its way by the look of it. So I can finally get out of my hat <laughs> and uh, fleece. And for any of you that don't know where we are, we're currently in Sardinia and depending on how long we're here for, we might be here for the summer month, which this might be necessary. Yeah, the uh, temperature could get quite intense. So we're happy to have this. And other things we're happy to have, like we said earlier, is the table. So we can take this from the inside to the outside and also these chairs. But unfortunately, all of these things are mobile within the van. They just sort of move around Hello. we can sh we can fit these chairs near the back quite well underneath where our little fire extinguisher is so that's quite good and um, it just means that we don't have to go into the roof box every time we want to get the chairs out so it works for us yeah. we also do have the room that joins to this as well so having outdoor space especially where we can stand up is really quite nice that might be erected in the next couple of weeks depending on Possibly, yeah. What's going on? Yeah, it's very handy to have. I guess this whole video is about how comfortable is it to live in the van. 
So far, we've shown you the good bits, the bad bits. Standing up is one of the main questions we get, and to be honest, it's not as negative as I thought it could have been. It doesn't really dictate the experience we're having. We kind of got used to it. I mean, it hasn't been that much of an issue, really. Changing clothes can sometimes be a bit of a palaver, getting on a new pair of trousers, but that's why I don't change my trousers very often these days. <laughs> anyway, sandwich time. I'm sorry I started without you, but <laughs> I can't just look at it when it's still hot. Doing the dishes is always a chore, regardless of whether you live in a house, a caravan, or a van. Uh, we find it's a job that just constantly needs doing throughout the day really. We tend to just let it pile up because we've only got a few utensils, plates and bowls and stuff like that. So if we use one cup, we've only got one left. So they always have to be clean. Yes. I do try my best to manoeuvre our meals about what utensils and plates and bowls we have left because it is one of our biggest gripes. We use the leftover hot water from making a coffee to wash up and we use environmentally friendly dish soap. We do our best to get rid of our water in a responsible way, which most of the time is down a drain. The worst thing about this for me is that you have to hold your arms at a funny angle and after a while they tend to ache. But it could be worse and it only takes us a few minutes in reality to do our few bowls and pans. So what happens when nature calls? Obviously, we don't have a toilet inside our little van, although we are considering maybe a small one for the future. Currently, what we have for number ones is this rather glamorous little aptly named PP jug. Uh, it is just a simple little commode that we got from a chemist. It's probably designed for the older person, but we find it very useful. Um, no accidents particularly to speak of yet, and uh, we use it fairly often, but always dispose of it in a sensible and respectful manner. So what happens if it's a bigger job? And we get asked this question quite a lot. So let me introduce to you the poo trowel. I bought this for Cal one Valentine's Day a few years ago, and it has come in handy for those moments where we're caught short. So the poo trowel comes in handy when we're in the wild, but what happens when we're more in an urban area and we cannot find a toilet? Let me introduce the poo basket. Put a small <laughs> bag inside, and that is for ultra emergencies. And we, we must admit, we don't use this very often. No, that's only for absolute last resort emergencies. The good thing with moving every other day or so is that we will pass or see a lot of public toilets and your body sort of tends to sync up with this. So this is our emergency kit, <laughs> essentially. It's not the most glamorous or sophisticated option. And like we said, we, we are considering maybe a little toilet for future adventures. This is a last resort and we also dispose of it in a very safe and respectable manner. We don't have a dedicated waste bin in the van. Instead, we use a reusable bag for all of our recycling and plastics and things like that, which we make sure that we wash out as well as we can and then dispose of. Being responsible van lifers, we do our best to recycle as much as we possibly can. So it means that sometimes we have to hold on to it for a lot longer than we normally would want to. So one thing that we do slightly differently is collect our food scraps and veg off cuts. We've been doing this since we did our zero waste video back in maybe September, potentially, I think. And this really works for us because it stops our bin getting stinky. Instead, all of our food scraps stay in here and get emptied into a compost bin or like biodegradable bin wherever we are, which throughout Europe, we've seemed to have found quite a few. Personally, I think the van is most coziest at night time when we're getting ready for our nightly entertainment or just getting ready for bed. One of the first jobs we do is to apply our external blackout screen. This was generously supplied by Fuel Lagoon and they managed to print our logo on there, and I think it looks pretty cool. I think 99.9% .9 of the time we have this on. It helps with the thermals and also to block out any lights as well, making it a bit cozier inside. Fortunately, this is a pretty straightforward job. Just takes around 30 seconds. 
it hooks over the doors like so and then there's little velcro straps that also go around the wing mirrors for a nice tight fit so once we've put on the external blind we've also got an internal one as well for the side window that covers the whole of it keeps us nice and warm and also blocks out the light too which is absolutely brilliant when we're going to sleep however in the morning it doesn't exactly inspire us to get out of bed when the sun rises because we don't really know that it has yet so that is a slight downside to it we're nice and cozy on the inside but uh, it doesn't really help us to get out of bed in the morning so when it comes to our evening entertainment it often includes an audiobook which we've got into recently just sit chilling maybe with a few snacks maybe with a bottle of wine but definitely especially in these climates at the moment with the heater on it makes it really comfortable and just really nice and cozy and warm and a place where you want to be sometimes we look forward to our nighttime entertainment a little bit too much we are currently in our third week of lockdown so we have been rinsing netflix's library <laughs> Dally. we have been rinsing netflix's library of films So that is a little slice of our van life reality. Mm -hmm. um, it works really well for us and there's not a huge amount that we would change if we were to do it again. Yeah, we've mentioned before there's a few things that we are looking to change, but it's nothing too drastic. I think the overall feeling is that you just adapt to what you've got. There's nothing we could particularly do to change much. Um, so you just make do with what you have. Yeah, you just get on with it. You find a new rhythm to work to. Mm and I think it also makes us communicate better. Most of the time, yeah. yeah most we, of the time, not always. So we've definitely both got our own little routines that we're into, whether that's uh, in the mornings or we're packing the van up to move on. There's certain things that we both do and it kind of just works, doesn't it? Yeah. Things haven't really changed that much with being on the campsite, other than being able to spread out a bit more and to use the facilities like the toilet and the washing up and the shower. One thing also which I think is worth pointing out is that your standards change. <laughs> For instance, not getting too down and dirty with it, but how often you wash that mug up because you will, may have a coffee in it a couple of times and then you get a little swill out for a tea, that sort of changes. And yep. you might eat cereal out of a mug just because everything is ready to wash. And you may just lick that fork again to use for that tea because again, the washing up isn't done. Same for clothing, just wear it again. It becomes more about practicality and than being um, fashionable, presentable. <laughs> presentable, yes, but like <laughs> if you wore an outfit every day, it would just be a waste of time. But okay, anyway, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. me rambling about personal hygiene. So yeah, hopefully that gave you a little insight. Uh, we love our van. Um, like we said at the, at the beginning, it's not the best or the most comfortable in the world, but it, it works. We've done thousands of miles, hundreds of nights in it now, and we love it and we're looking forward to doing more when eventually we can move. Yes, we have said that we will be living in this for about a year, but depending on what happens, it could push over <laughs> a few extra months, but we could happily live in this for a long, long time, I think. Yep, there's already future adventures I'm thinking about and I'm getting really excited for, uh, but the hurdle is obviously being stuck here and running out of money ever so slowly, so we'll have to see what happens. Yes. So thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it this far, please feel free to give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or press subscribe if you're not already. And if you want to get notifications each time we upload a new video, press the little bell button too. Yes, there is plenty more coming from Camp Lockdown. We have had some fantastic ideas, if I do say so myself, over the last few days. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one. Toodle pip. I'll kick off if that's all right. Yeah. Go then. So that is... <clears throat> well kicked off. You're going to die soon. <laughs> so we have been watching a lot of films. Oh, dear, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh leave it in. <sighs> <sighs> no, it won't do. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Flora and the Novice Explorers. <laughs> From the cook seat, everything is in arm's reach. <laughs>
<laughs> so whilst the coffee's brewing, <laughs> so while the coffee's brewing, brewing me. Three, two, one. Whilst we're doing all of that, at the same time we have to. What? <laughs> you came in so much gusto. And whilst we're finding all the room for that, we also need to make sure we give each other space, which is. <laughs> Can I have a prompt? I think we should go from the top. Can you be ready with what you need to say? Because I don't think you were ready. <laughs> and. <laughs> so the pool. <laughs> <laughs> We've got BL too. And we also do have the. <laughs> we also do have the room that joins to this as well. Okay.